This video is sponsored by Undoes It. In today's video, we are gonna be showing you guys how to tie your boat up to a dock when there's no cleats. So if there's no cleats, you're most likely tying your boat up to pilings. We're gonna be showing you guys how to tie the lines to the pilings for both long-term and short-term docking. My name is Emily, we have Amanda behind the camera, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. First, we're gonna go over three different ways to actually tie your dock line to the piling. Then we're gonna go over proper line spacing for long-term docking, and then also simple short-term docking, unless there's pulling up for five minutes, just real quick, easy ways to dock. The first method is the round turn and two half hitches, which is exactly what it sounds like. But before we tie our line to the piling, we're gonna tie our line to the boat cleat. And for the boat cleat purpose, I like to use the basic loop end. All we're gonna do is tie our dock line to the cleat on the boat. Nice and Pull simple. Pull it through, go around both horns of that cleat, and then we're gonna focus on the, the piling. piling. So the first thing we're gonna do is our round turn. So we're gonna go over the piling. One time, you ready Amanda? Mm-hmm. And two times. Okay. That was beautiful, round turn. That was great, looks amazing. She went around it twice. Now we're gonna tie our two half hitches. A half hitch, guys, is the same knot that you learn to tie your friendship bracelets with. So using this part of the line, which goes from the piling to the boat, we're gonna tie our half hitches with. We're gonna go over and under, and we're gonna pull it through on the side that's closest to the piling. Just like that, so it snugs up to the piling. Just like that, and she's gonna do that one more time. Over the line that's attached to the boat, and under. under, closer to the piling. Pull, pull, pull that. Snug it up. There we go. There we go. And that's what your line should look like. So, Emily, go ahead and step out of the boat. If you pull that away from you, you can see that you have your round turn and two beautiful half hitches. Now, Amanda, what do we do? with the extra dock line. We make now, it pretty. We like to make it pretty. There's not a lot of extra line here, but if there is, it'll definitely be worth making it pretty with. I'll just come on the floor here and make a nice little circle, spin it around. I'll make it really clean. People will be really impressed when they walk by your boat. They'll be like, wow, that's so pretty. So beautiful. There you go. That's the round turn and, and two, two half, half hitches. hitches right there. Method number two is the clove hitch. Again, we're already tied off to our cleat on the boat on this end, and then we have this end which is going on the piling. So, just like the last one, the first step is just simply put your line around, around the, the piling. piling. Just like that. So you're gonna go around one time, and we're actually gonna go around twice. We went around the first time, and then as we're going around the second time, the end right there that Emily has is going underneath. So go underneath and pull that through. So she's gonna pull that through, and then, here we go. Hold on, chip, perfect. She's gonna keep a little hole with her left hand. Got my hole with my left hand. I'm gonna take my dock line and go through this hole. And we're gonna snug it up. Perfect, so that is your clove hitch. That so looks beautiful. A clove hitch, you'll see these two lines are together and you'll have one crossing over it. Now that we have our clove hitch, I wanna secure it with some half hitches. So I'm just gonna take my line, very natural just to grab it around one more time and start the clove hitch from this side. So we're gonna go over the line that's from Perfect. the piling to the boat and do our half hitch. Just like that. And then we're gonna do a second one, just like that. And you can snug both of those up, push them close to the piling. And there you have your second method the to clove tying hitch your secure. line to the piling. The third and final method for tying up to a piling is a little different, but way simpler. This is definitely an easy one for short-term docking. So instead of having this end tied to the cleat, we're actually gonna do the piling. So all we're gonna do, you ready, Amanda? We're ready, show this. All right, we're gonna go around the piling and we're going to take our other end and pull, and pull it through. through. Just, Just like, like that. this. Pull it straight through and then Make you can nice go ahead. And snug. Perfect. Just like that. And then what we're gonna do is use the end, the other end to tie off to the cleat. 
We're gonna go right down there and we're gonna just tie off to the cleat. First we're gonna do is make a complete circle. And then we're gonna do two cleat hitches, which this is a cleat hitch, this is a cleat hitch. And lastly, we're gonna twist the line to secure it, like that. Just like that, and you're ready to go. Now that you know what to do with your pilings when you don't have cleats, we're gonna show you how to properly tie up your boat for long-term and short-term docking. But before we get into that, we are gonna talk about our sponsor, Undoes It. You guys know that we're fishing all the time, the boat is getting super dirty, but we also now have Kona. And Kona will run, play in the dirt, play at the sandbar, and she jumps in the boat and brings it all onto the boat because she doesn't care, she's a dog. I would do the same. And we really like Undoes It because it has an ultra concentrated formula and it's going to remove, hard to remove, dirt, grime, grease, oils, and Kona's footprints. We really like using the Undoes It boat wash for everyday use because it's not gonna remove any wax or polishes from your boat, keeping it super shiny and pretty. It's really easy, all you have to do is spray it or throw it in a bucket with some water, scrub it, rinse it, and you're sparkling. This soap is safe for fiberglass, gel coat, plastic, metal, glass, wood, painted surfaces, canvas, vinyl, and so much more. And one of my favorite things about this boat wash is that I don't have to worry about Kona because it's biodegradable, ammonia-free, and chlorine-free. Be sure to click the links in the description box to get your Undoes It products. For long-term docking, the first line we're gonna start with is our stern line. But before we get into that, let's check over here and point out that the one thing we want to make sure is not happening is that our stern is not going to come and hit this dock. Now you can see the piling to the left is perfectly placed, so it's pretty much impossible for my stern to come in and hit the concrete. But if that piling weren't there, I might want to put a fender there, I might want to reposition the boat up a few pilings or back a few pilings, so that way I don't worry about this corner hitting the dock or if it's low tide, the dock, could the dock could literally be higher than the boat and the boat could end up going under the dock at low tide, the tide comes up and then your boat can literally fill up with water like that. The natural thing to do will probably be to want to tie off to the piling that's closest to your stern because we got our stern line, we got to tie it off to our stern piling. However, as much as that makes a lot of sense, we want to go with longer and further distances when it comes to long-term docking. So let's back up over here. It's not natural to think to go over here, but what this is going to do is it's going to give us a lot more leverage when the tides go up and down. On this piling, my choice is going to be the round turn and two half hitches. And as you can see, what Emily is going to do is she is going to come down to the dock to tie her knots. And the reason for that is because if for some reason she tied up here and the line loosened and fell down here, we would be adding slack to our dock line that we may or may not want. Now, some dock lines or some piling have a little hook or cleat up top, so you might wanna tie above that, but you just wanna make sure that your dock line isn't gonna loosen and all of a sudden add a bunch of length, which would not be a good thing. So here you can kind of get a visual on how much length we have. Maybe that's around six, seven feet, but you could even tie one more piling over to give yourself even more room. That might be great if there's a hurricane coming. And this way at the line, if the tide goes up and down, the dock line is long enough to give you some leverage that you're gonna need. And we're gonna do the same thing for the bow line. Now Emily is wrapping up her dock line, making it nice and pretty. That looks beautiful. The next line is going to be our bow line. Again, it's nice to start with the loop side, guys, because the benefit to that is that, let's say you're gonna go and come back a bunch of times, you'll know the length already. So all you gotta do is come, tie yourself up, and you're exactly. good to go. So this is perfect for your home dock to have the loop end on the cleat because you can pre-measure how much line you're gonna need. And every time you come home, you're already set up. And that's why this is a long-term docking technique right now. We're gonna be doing the same thing for our bow line that we did for our stern line. So I could be using that piling right there, perfectly fine. But because I had the option to go a little further out, I'm gonna take advantage of it and I'm gonna do it. And Amanda, while I tie this one up here, why don't you show that we have that one not too slack? Exactly. So while Emily is gonna be tying up that bow line right there, and as you can see, we have a nice long bow line. So that's gonna be helpful, and I hope it makes sense that if the tide's going up and down, your line is long enough to allow the boat to go up and down with the tide as well. Because imagine if your line were tied right here, you really do not have a lot of forgiveness. 
and you do want to make sure you have some slack between your bow line and stern line so right here today we have the wind and current pushing the boat backwards so this is going to be our probably most slack line while the bow line is going to be our tight line just based on what the wind is doing today the next line would be the spring line and you can do two spring lines in this situation and this day i really only need one but if I wanted to stay here for weeks and weeks at a time, maybe I should put two on because the conditions will be changing. I have my line tied off to the cleat that's in the middle of the boat here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk forwards and I'm gonna pull on it and pull the boat forwards a little bit, just like that. And this is where I would be tying off and doing my round turn and two half hitches or whatever my choice is. So that way I am using this spring line to stop the boat from going forwards and backwards. Exactly, so if you have that spring line, what it's doing, so Emily, the reason she pulled it forward was just to decide how far back was the furthest back she was comfortable having the boat. So the spring line, what it's doing is it's stopping the boat from traveling too far backwards, this spring line is specifically, and the bow line is more so gonna stop the boat from traveling too far into the marina towards mm -hmm. the right. Let's say this marina is super busy, guys, and there's a boat right up against my transom, and I really don't want, with this wind and current pushing me into them, I'm gonna come here, come on the spring line, pull up on it, so that way we're really stopping the boat from sliding any further back. Exactly, so imagine there is a boat right behind our transom. We need a spring line to make sure that we don't travel any further back. And you can do the same thing. We could take our line, our spring line right here. It's tied off to that cleat and we could put one back here. Now, sometimes our home dock, we actually have a bow line, a stern line and two spring lines one going towards the bow and one going towards the stern, just like that. Because of where we're docked, we have crazy conditions oh, yeah. every day. Sometimes so let's say the conditions changed and the boat was going really far this way, I'd come here, put the spring line and stop it from going any further. Lastly, let's talk about short-term docking. When you're doing short-term docking, you don't wanna take the work to create these clove hitches these round turns and half hitches and how do I tie up to the piling? You wanna get there, dock, tie off, run inside, maybe fuel up, buy some lunch to go food, something like that, right? So what do you do? This is what you do. I would literally use one dock line and I'm tied off to the midship cleat. Right there, we're tied off to the midship cleat. I would come right. over here. Right, exactly. Now this is one of our favorites. My techniques. favorite. I would go onto this piling, get really snug on it. This is where it's important to get snug. And then come back into the boat just like this. We're gonna come down to the same cleat. And all I like to do here is make a couple cleat hitches. Make sure you secure your hitches, just like that. And because we're tied off so snug and we're on midship, the boat really shouldn't go anywhere, especially if you're just gonna be gone for a few minutes at a time. One more thing to note is that this is a great little tie off technique if you have the wind pushing you into the dock. Now, if the wind's not pushing you into the dock, but pushing you off the dock, we got another technique we for another you. another technique. If the midship dock line is not enough, let's say the wind is pushing the boat off the dock. Yes, we'd be tie up, tied up here nice and tight, but the stern would start to kick out. And right that's, here, you would see the stern kick out, which is not necessary. It's not ideal. It's not good when you have people getting on and off your boat. Today, guys, I can literally drop everything. The wind is pushing us straight into the dock a little bit that way, but not too quickly. So it's okay just to do the midship cleat over here. But Let's say we still want to be fast, but the wind is pushing us a little bit off the dock. Here's what we do. We are tied off to our midship cleat right here, coming up and over the midship piling. Kona is all snug right here and happy on her little cooling mat. And here Emily is. Okay, this is our fun, this is our favorite technique. Favorite technique. So I'm gonna utilize this piling and the piling by the transom. Again, it's important to be snug. I'm gonna come around this piling Get back on the boat, make sure we're nice and snug, pull us nice and close. And I'm gonna tie this line, the other end of the line, onto this transom cleat. So she's gonna come down in here and she is going to tie off to this cleat just like that. And so this is another great technique to really keep you close and snug to the dock for some short-term docking. Maybe you're fueling up, maybe you're grabbing some to-go food, but you're not gonna be leaving the dock for an extended period of time. One more reminder that I do wanna mention is you wanna make sure that your transom cannot swing 
under the dock or even just hit the concrete dock. So a good way to prevent that is try to get your transom as close to a piling as possible. Now that's gonna prevent your boat from hitting the dock. Now, if you don't have a piling around, maybe you only have cleats, that's when you're gonna to wanna to bring out the fenders. But just to show you, we're tied off to a cleat around one piling coming up around the second piling and down to the cleat. That's a great way if you're in a pinch, maybe you forgot your dock lines, you only have one, you're tying off real quick, you're watching the boat and you're about to head out. Now that you guys know how to do long-term docking and short-term docking, now that you know how to tie up the pilings, you can take all this information and also apply it to cleats. If you have a cleat, that's great, that's even easier and simpler, but now you don't have to worry what do you do when there's no cleats and you only have pilings. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. We hope you found it helpful. Make sure you get out there, have fun and stay safe.